Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and today I've got a little bit of a different video. Uh, I've had a couple people ask about some of the... Uh, I'm hesitant to even call it modding that I do. I, I don't really consider myself a modder, uh, but I do like to occasionally kind of take apart some of the mods and uh, see if I can tweak them or uh, change the logos on stuff. Um, <laughs> So, in my Let's Play series, I've had a, a modded bale wrapper that I've been using that puts my logo on it. And then uh, I'm working on, and I'll be doing some videos on, uh, I'm modding a semi-trailer to put my logo on the side of the trailer, too. So, uh, to get started in modding, I mean, the, the, the basics, the, the very first two things that you're going to need... And really, you even need this if you're going to do simple stuff like modifying your save files or, um, at this point, because it's in beta, even installing the developer edition of Course Play, you're going to need these first two utilities. So the, the first one is a zip utility. Now, I use 7-zip. I prefer 7-zip, and I recommend 7-zip. Um... There's other free zip utilities out there. Windows itself can even zip and unzip stuff. Uh, it just doesn't give you the control that 7-zip does over how to go about making the zip files and managing the contents of existing zip files. Uh, you can use Win WinRAR if you like WinRAR. I personally don't like WinRAR because I feel like it gets, they, they package it up with too much, um, I don't wanna say malware, but like, <laughs> kind of spammy advertisements and um, it's it's really kind of in your face about like you know buy a version or you know trial versions and stuff like that 7-zip isn't like that 7-zip is just a good clean zip utility that just does zips right like <laughs> just does that thing does it well I like it um, so the website is uh, www.7-zip.org and, uh, you know, right here for Windows, you've got two downloads. If you have a 32-bit version of Windows, use this. Um, if you're on a 64-bit version, which most people probably are, use this one here, this download link. And it just download and install like any other program. You know, download this. It'll put a EXE in your uh, My Downloads folder. Just run the EXE and follow the installation process step by step. Uh, once it's installed you'll wind up with, um, let me make a new zip file here. All right, so I've made this uh, example zip file here and with 7-zip now you have, uh, it'll, it'll install itself into your Windows context menu, which means that I can right click on this and you'll see here 7-zip is now an option. And from here you can open the archive. Uh, you can, you know, extract or, you know, do different things with it. And it's also important to note that 7-zip will make its own zip type file extension called .7z. And it's a little more efficient in the sense that the compression algorithm works better and you'll wind up with smaller files, but for the purpose of modding, you should probably avoid using this and just stick with regular zip files as more systems will be able to use this. Uh, so we can just open the archive. This is what 7-zip looks like. It, uh, you know, you can add files, extract, etc. There's nothing in the zip file, so it's empty. Otherwise, there'd be files listed here. And to get a better understanding of how to use this, you'll see it in my... Uh, video that I'm going to have out pretty soon about how to install the developer edition of course play. So moving on to the next thing on our list here, we've got Notepad++ and this actually is Notepad++. So this is the website for Notepad++. If you want to download it, there's a big download button right here. And uh, you know, you want the installer um, I would do again if you have a 32-bit system you have that option most people at this point in time probably have 64-bit systems 
So you can get the installer for a 64-bit system. And then uh, it'll download an EXE to your My Downloads folder. Just double click it, install it like you normally would. And then once it's installed, uh, you can open it like any other application from your start menu. Or uh, again, you'll wind up with a context menu. So if I do a new text document and I call this test.text, uh, if I right click on this, I can now say edit with Notepad++. And that'll open that document here in Notepad++. So Notepad++ comes in really handy for modifying game save files, uh, and also for modifying some of the files that come in module packages. And what I mean by that is here I've got a save game file, and it's a save game actually consists of a folder with a few files in it. And then the, the ones that you really want to look at typically are going to be career, save, game, economy, and vehicles. Those are probably your most, um, most commonly modified files if you're trying to do something or tweak something with your save game file. Uh, the, the big one that everyone wants to know obviously is in career, save, game, uh, if you scroll down to money, that's the number. If you change that, save the file, and then go back in, in uh, into that save game, that's how much money you'll have, right? So if you want a whole bunch of money, just add some zeros and then save this and go into the game and boom, you got a whole bunch of money. So <laughs> I, I'm not um, endorsing this, but... Uh, I, you know, for me, when I set up games for the purpose of testing a mod or, um, you know, doing some of the game strategy stuff, well, the, the point of the video is to test a particular thing. The point isn't me spending, you know, 50 hours of gameplay to get enough money to buy the piece of equipment so that I can test it, right? So... I'm not going to, like in my Let's Play series, I don't modify this, right? Like all the money that I get is money that I've earned by doing stuff. And, you know, I play it fair and square all the way through. But in the, uh, in my tutorials and stuff like that, I'll definitely make test games. And I go in and, and add enough money in here so that I can do whatever it is I need to do to, to make the video. So if you just want to, you know, one of the things I like to do is just make a save game, put a bunch of money in it, and like go buy a whole bunch of equipment and just drive equipment and try it out and see how one piece of equipment's different from another and how they look and things like that. And I also have, um, whenever I do get a mod off of the internet, what I like to do is install that mod into a test game and test it out before I use it in my Let's Play series because um, I've had a couple times, and, and one recently, where I, I put down a placeable shed and it just didn't handle the ground well. And so I was really disappointed with it and wound up just immediately removing it. And, you know, it's one of those things I could have avoided that had I have taken the time to actually test the mod. So uh, with some of the bigger, especially equipment purchases, um, I almost always will test those mods in a test game using fake money before I actually try them out in a real game. Just because you, you never know what you're going to get. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of how, how and why you would use Notepad++. And so moving on to the next item, actually, i got to bring that back up here. Close this. Alright, so moving on to the next thing here, it's uh, paint.net. And I use a couple different free image editing utilities. Um, I've been using uh, a utility called GIMP for a long time. And uh, it's, it's just an open source image manipulation utility. And it's more of like a Photoshop sort of deal. It's, it's got uh, more options. It handles layers really well. Um, Anyone who does image editing probably knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but I, for this, I'm actually recommending paint.net. 
and one of the reasons for that is I believe it's um, let me check here it is yeah these DDS files uh, GIMP doesn't really handle DDS files very well at least I haven't been able to come up with a way to get it to handle the DDSs very well. Paint.net, on the other hand, really good at it, like right out of the box. You don't have to do plugins or anything. It, it does really well with the DDS files. So um, yeah, I would, that's why I'm recommending Paint.net over GIMP at this point. So uh, again, with Paint.net, we'll just go to the website. Um, their website's a little more annoying than some of the other ones because they've got these um, ad choices in here. And I hate these because it's a site where you're going to download software and it's got all these fake download buttons. So um, this is one of my biggest complaints about a lot of the modding websites out there, right? Is they're all ad revenue based and all the ads are just big giant fake download buttons that are just there to trick someone into downloading some file that's not what they're actually there to download, right? So from the paint.net website, what you're going to want to do is go to here in the very top, there's a download link. Go there and then down here below the giant fake download button. There's uh, this where it has the version, the date, the language, and then this uh, download button here, download now dot pn. Click that and it will download it to your my downloads folder. And then from there, just like any other application, just open it and install it. And then once it's installed, uh, you can you know open it like any other application and you can use it to open images. So here's um, a logo I just made for, uh, you know, a square logo, like a profile picture logo. And so this is this is paint.net, right? So it, it does have support for, you know, most normal image manipulation stuff, layers and adju adjustments, effects and things like that. So, uh, and then of course, you know, you can use them for modifying these DDS files. So with this, like I, I'll right click on this and then say open with paint.net. And there you go. Here's the, the big DDS file for this Baylor. And basically these are all, um, these are all, uh, in, in the web development world, we call this a sprite. It's one image. That's a whole bunch of images put together. And then the code will basically say load this image, but then load this section. And that's how it gets these, the individual pieces, right? So this keeps you from having to have, you know, I don't know, look at all the pictures here. There's probably, uh, I don't know, maybe 50, 60, <laughs> some individual images, but they're all in this one big image. And so, uh, you can, you know, you can technically go in here and modify one of these as long as you stay within the dimensions, right? And then in theory, um, the model will pull in that image, uh, the, you know, what you modified out of it. So, and of course, you know, what I'm showing you here is that paint.net can open DDSs and can save them. So that's important. So then the next thing on our list is going to be Giants Editor, of course. So for Giants Editor, you're going to want to go to uh, gdn.giants-software.com or you can just Google Giants Developer Network and then you're going to have to create a, a login. So you're going to have to make a uh, account with them with your email and password and then that's going to give you access to this download link and then uh, you just want to download the latest version of the Giants editor and I think currently they only have a 64-bit version of it they don't have a 32-bit version so uh, once you download that and install it, it you just run it like any other program 
Uh, let's see here. There we go. <laughs> so this is the Giants editor. And I don't really have... Let's see if we can open something here. There you go. That's the bail wrapper model in Giants editor. Uh, and then, you know, with this in here, you can kind of select different things. So, you know, here's the attachment point for wheel right, wheel left. There's a hydraulic cylinder. That's a movement for the arm. There's the plastic roll. And then you got your, your lights and your corona effects. So we're not going to get into too much detail about Giants Editor, but this is, you know, we'll, we'll get into here eventually. <laughs> I, I honestly, um, back in 15, I spent a while trying to make a map, and uh, I didn't get terribly far with it. Like, I got the terrain and some basic roads and some fields and stuff, but I really didn't, uh, um, you know, I got some water in there, but uh, I didn't really have time to do it. Plus, it, I don't know, it's one of those deals where I enjoy playing the game more than I enjoy making mods and maps for it so um and, and and then i got into making videos and so <laughs> i spend so much time making the videos that i don't really have time to make maps but i do dabble a little bit with customizing some of the mods so all right so that's giants editor and then let's uh, say so i don't want to save that so then the next thing on the list is blender and this is where you start to get kind of really advanced. So one of the, in Giants Editor, you notice that like the elements that you're working with are, are the lights and the movement and the function, but you're not really modifying the model, right? So if you wanted to change the shape of something, you can't necessarily do that in Giants Editor. So to modify a model, you have to use Blender. And uh, I'm not even going to bother opening it. I'll open up, uh, here's the homepage for it, right? So blender.org. Uh, this is free. Got a nice download button right there. Um, Blender is very complicated, and I'm probably not going to do any videos <laughs> on it. Um, there's other videos on the internet of guys who are significantly better at using Blender than I am. Uh, so I would definitely go check those out. <laughs> uh, but again, you just download and install it. And, and that's the application that you would use if you wanted to actually mod the model of something in the game. So, all right. I mean, that's, that's basically everything. These are the five applications that you kind of need to get if you want to get into the modding world. And, um, you know, 7-Zip, Notepad++ are must-haves. Paint.net, pretty close in there. And then depending on how advanced you want to get, Giants Editor and then Blender. So, uh, hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, I intend on doing a couple more that are modding related. Like I said, I'm going to be working on modding a semi-trailer and just putting my logo on it, really. That's all I'm going to be doing. So, uh... If you did like this video and want to see more like it, please give this video a thumbs up. That helps a lot. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And please subscribe for more Farming Simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer. Thanks for watching.